Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to our AutoCAD tutorial. I hope you've had a chance to look at our previous video that will essentially assist you in getting a free educational license. That's if you are a student or you have an affiliation with a university or a university of technology. This is because universities renew their licenses every year Therefore, they can give you access if you are a student or, like I said, if you have an affiliation with them. So on today's video, I will essentially be giving you an introduction to the AutoCAD interface or essentially what it looks like. As soon as you've now installed and you have, have the license and everything is good to go, once you open the AutoCAD software, this is essentially what it looks like. So today I'll just be giving you a rundown on essentially what you can use each of these different companies for. Starting from the top left corner up there, we have what we call our application menu. And if you click on it there, it essentially assists you to open a new file, open an existing file, save, save as, import, export, publish, print or plot. And it also gives you your drawing utilities. On this side, it will most likely show you some drawings that you worked on or some recent files that you would have worked on right then right next to your application menu on here we have our quick access toolbar and it's like a condensed application menu because it has the same options that you would have accessed on the application menu on here you can create a new file open an existing file save save as open from web and mobile or save to web and mobile, print or plot, depending on which version you're using, but print or plot is the same thing. Then on here is a back arrow that allows you to undo anything that you would have done and you feel like, oops, press the wrong button or I selected an incorrect command, okay? Then on here we have our ribbon menu so from home insert annotate parametric view manage output at ends collaborate express tools as well as featured apps this is essentially what we call our ribbon tab and when you click on each one it comes with its own set of tools it comes with its own set of commands depending of course on what you're trying to do or what command you are trying to work with then right below the ribbon tab are the ribbons themselves so this entire space on here this is what we call our ribbons and this is where you're able to access your commands now your commands assist you to carry out a certain thing depending on what you're trying to do if you're trying to draw a specific object if you're trying to modify the object that you drew, if you're trying to, to, to give a direction as to how you want it to look in terms of text and dimension, in terms of how you want the layers, you specify your different layers, depending on how you want your work to look. If you want to insert blocks, now with blocks, you're able to essentially create a block, save it, and you're able to reuse it. It works in instances where you want to insert title blocks or you want to insert um, a block for a specific building or there are items that you want to reuse that are not specifically on your commands here, then you're able to utilize it. Then on here, we have our properties, our groups, our utilities, then you can copy and paste and essentially that is what you will be using whenever you want to create something over here. If you want to draw it or if you want to change how it behaves, you will be making use of the ribbon on there. Alternatively, if you want to reach a command or if you want a specific command to use, but you do not want to look for each item separately or you don't want to have to search for it, you can use the command bar or command box down here so this is the white triangle you see at the very bottom of the screen for some laptops or for some pcs it might put them right up top i'm not sure what actually dictates that but normally when you open autocad you'll find it right at the bottom so whatever command that you would have found or used from the ribbon you're also able to type it down here and that will essentially bring the command up to screen and then you're able to use it 
then we have our file tabs on here so you'll see that three dot three lines then you have your start drawing if you want to open a new drawing or if you want to create a separate drawing for every specific thing you're doing then you can essentially keep on clicking on the plus sign on there it keeps creating a new drawing but remember in an instance where you are maybe completing an assignment or a test and you create a new drawing you'll need to specify the same layers and annotation and that might take a bit of time so normally what i prefer is just use one drawing you have this whole entire screen and more to utilize. If you feel like you have filled up the screen, you can easily access the pan button and that's essentially meant to assist you to access an extended screen. So I normally tell my students that the pan button is like having a paper and you've used up the entire paper on your drawing board and you essentially want to move it from left to right and that's where the pan button will come into effect but we will get to that so if you still prefer to use different drawings just remember that if you have specified certain settings on your drawing or if it has a certain scale and you've used a certain text height and dimensions and so on then you would essentially need to specify those for each specific drawing to make sure that your work is uniform and it's neat as well then we're gonna go to the very bottom left corner we have our three lines again we have model because we're currently on the model space so this black space you see on here is what we call our model space and it's where you will be carrying out your drawing commands it's where you will be doing the actual work then we have layout one and two you can click on layout one and layout one or two you can add more and more and more as you wish but essentially these layouts are meant to show you how your work will look once you print it out okay so remember the end goal is not this black space on here the end goal is for you to produce an actual drawing on paper and your layout is meant to represent that drawing on your paper once we actually do some drawings then i'll keep switching between the model and the layout space so you can see how certain things you draw or don't draw how certain layers and scales and text and dimensions and so forth how they essentially look on the final product the end goal is your final product even if it looks really nice and colorful on your model space but if you are for instance using a, a wrong layer or you are using um, a wrong scale then unfortunately it affects how your end result looks like i said you can create different layouts so unlike the drawings that you would have created on here these are from the same drawing so it works in instances where on the model space let's say you were completing an assignment or an exam then on here you had question one on here you had question two on here you had question three and each of those questions had different scales so layout one you can even rename it and say this will be for question one then essentially you come here and you'll be able to set up how you want the page to behave and this is where you'll get to modify it specify your scales specify the paper size specify where you want it to print to specify the plot table specify the colors the scale how you want it to look and so on but we are not there yet right but I'm just giving you this tip so you can refer back to it by the time you start printing and um, creating PDFs of your work. So you can specify a specific scale on question one. Then when you get to question two, then you can specify a different scale. Maybe question one has a scale one, one is to 30. Maybe question two has a scale one is to 50. And obviously it makes those different items appear differently. And you don't want to, at the end of the day, affect how every single question looks because you just wanted everything to use the same scale. You can specify as many questions as you need to specify. It doesn't really limit you. All right. Then, like I said, this black area on here is what we call your drawing area or your model space. And that's where you are carrying out your work. 
then at the bottom right corner we have our status bar and this is essentially what gives you information on how um, your commands are acting or reacting on your actual screen right here it's already telling us we're on the model space then on here you have your display drawing grid some people prefer to turn it off i don't really know why but i prefer that you leave it on but if for some instance or for some reason you want to turn it off then that is the button you can tog toggle on or off all right then on here we have our cursor restriction and essentially the preference is that you keep it here on specified angles and it will become clear once we start drawing how it actually behaves but it normally shows you a green line that will essentially show if you are working in a straight line or not for instance if we use the line command that green line or the green dotted line that precedes my actual line shows that i'm moving at a zero degree line and it means that my work is straight the minute you move, even if it's by two degrees or by three or by something as small as like one degree, it will not show the green line. And this is meant to show you that you are no longer working in a straight line. Remember, as an engineer, as an architect, as a person who is meant to produce drawings, you want to chase accuracy. Accuracy is the end goal. It's the name of the game. Okay, so if that green dotted line or dashed line is in there, that is already an indication that your work is not straight. Then these ones on here, these two, are meant to show you your, op um, your object snap settings. And these normally assist when you are picking up some objects, when you are either copying, moving, um, mirroring, or you are trying to modify an object that's already on screen. It helps to specify essentially how you pick it up, but it will make more sense once we start doing some up some drawings. But for instance, if we have a rectangle corner, a rectangle object on here, and I want to copy it, then it's going to ask me to select the object. Then that's the object, enter. Then specifying the base point. By base point, we mean where do you want to pick it up? And this is essentially where these commands came in. If you click on that arrow, it will show you that our pickup points are the end point, midpoint, cent center, geometric centers. But you'll obviously have a look at the ones that you've ticked on there. If, for instance, we ticked on midpoint, right? Then it gives us an option to pick it up at the midpoint. But if the midpoint was not selected, right, then obviously it would only use the options that are available for your um, rectangle. Obviously, the center, geometric centers and whatnot will not be applicable for a shape such as a rectangle. So on here, it will allow me to pick up at the end points, which are the corners, right? That's essentially how we use the snap settings. Then on here, we have annotation objects, um, adding scales, annotative objects. These are applicable once you've now added your text or your dimensions or you want to. And it um, assists you mainly when you get to print your work or once you now represent it on the paper space. It just helps you to be able to still see your text at a certain scale to the paper versus a scale to the drawing so regardless of the scale that your drawing is at your text will always be visible at a certain size it won't change and that will mainly assist when you're moving into different layouts okay but we are gonna get into that once we do the annotation the textiles the dimensions and so forth on here you have your settings if you want to switch your workspaces and that is essentially what we will be using when we are dealing with our AutoCAD workspace. Then before I forget, on here you have your navigation panel. The button or the, 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 the command that will most likely use, especially when we're doing 2D drawings, will be the pen command. Now I said the pen command assists if you want to move your paper and you want to use the rest of this paper. Okay, if you've selected a command and you want to exit the command, you can easily press escape or enter. But if for some reason you get confused with where you are, what you're trying to do, simply try to find your cursor on the screen 
or look at what it's saying around the command line. It normally gives you prompts to proceed either to continue with a specific command or to go in a different direction. It is a very interactive interface and it helps if you know what you're trying to do or where to find assistance if you cannot seem to, you know, figure out what you're doing. But I hope this was helpful. Stick around for more videos where we will be going in depth into the different commands and into the different ribbon tools that you can utilize. We'll also be getting into floor plans, sectional plans, roof plans, that sort of thing. And I am essentially trying to make AutoCAD easier. If you have any questions, you're more than welcome to leave a comment or to email me or to, I don't know, get hold of me how you can. You can DM me if you want. I'm not really fussy with that sort of thing. Like I said, stick around for the next video and I'll see you then. Ciao.